This video is going to be for Octave users only. MATLAB users, you can just skip this, go right ahead to the next video, which picks up where the previous video left off. Now my Octave users, what I'm going to cover here is basically all of the content that I did in the previous video, except that code only works in MATLAB, doesn't work in Octave. So this is going to show you how to read in mixed data types from file using Octave. And what I mean by mixed data types is the data in the file might be not only numeric, but also text data mixed in there. Now, earlier on in this video series, I made a dedicated Octave video where I covered reading information in from file, and I kind of wish I would have merged that content with this content, but I will make sure that those two videos, this one and the previous one, have a link right at the very end. There's an end screen that'll pop up where you can click on the corresponding video and revisit that one so that basically all my Octave content on reading data from files will be together. All right, let's go ahead and start off. We're in part 03 underscore matrices underscore two, and the file that I'm in, I just named it mixed data reading octave.m, uh, and there's also gonna be a second file of code that I will get to in a little bit. All the code and all the data files can be found through links in the video description. All right, so text read is the first important function that we're gonna look at, and this is an Octave only function. There's a different function that'll do the same thing in MATLAB. So I've got this tester.csv, just a little comma separated value file that I created to test out how to get text read working. So I'm going to go over to my Google Drive. And again, all these files are available to you as well. So here I'm in Google Drive and I'm going to double click on tester.csv and I'm going to zoom in on it right here. All right. Now it's displayed sort of like an Excel spreadsheet. Um, we have one column that has A, B, and C in it and another column that has one, two, and three in it. Very, very basic. All right, so back to Octave. What am I doing here with text read? Well, I want a separate variable for each column of data that I'm gonna read in. So I've got a variable named A and a variable named B in square brackets right here. I set it equal to text read and then parentheses, what is the file that I'm gonna read in from? And then I use a comma, of course, and then dot, 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 just to move down onto the next line. I'm gonna try and keep everything organized and easy to read here. And then on the next line, I use these formatting symbols, percent %s for strings or text data, percent %d for decimal valued integers. These are very much the same symbols that you might use when you're using like fprintf, for example. They're formatting placeholders. And this is my way of telling Octave that the first set of values in that first column is going to be text data. It's going to be strings. And the data in the second column is going to be integers. And then I have another dot, dot, dot go down to the next line. I use the word delimiter in single quotes to tell Octave, I'm gonna tell it what the delimiter value is, what is the separator symbol between my data, and then give that symbol after a comma inside of single quotes, the separator is gonna be a comma. And then I can say, how many header lines are there? How many lines of this file should you just skip? Now, uh, I don't have any header lines in this, these first two files, but I'll show you one in the third. So I just say header lines zero. I believe that's the default and you don't need it, but I felt like just including it just to be safe. All right, so I'm gonna highlight that code and run it. F9 is the shortcut and it does work, except that it means something different to my video recording software. So I actually have to go click on it. Normally you could just hit F9 and it would run whatever's selected. Okay, excellent. So what I've got here is a cell array with uh, an array of three values inside of it with A, B, and C. And then I've got B right here as well with just, it's a matrix of three integers. And you can see those data types in the workspace over here on the left. Excuse me, I think I misspoke. The cell array is three by one. So it's a single cell array right here with three values within it. I haven't really talked about cell arrays and I'm not planning on doing that until much, much later in the video series. But for now, all you need to know is that it's a way of storing either mixed data types or often it's going to be used for string or text data. In this whole video, especially toward the bottom, things are going to get a little bit more complicated and it can be useful to check out your workspace and see what types of data you're dealing with. In any case, I've got two variables with the values from the two separate columns. Awesome. Let's make it a little bit more complicated and take a look at tester2.csv. So I go back over here, double click on tester2.csv. And we see that it just adds a third column right here of data with decimal places. So what I can do is add a third variable to read in the information, modify my placeholder symbols. So I've got a percent %f here for the floating point data that is in that third column. 
everything else stays the same. I'll go ahead and run it. And there we go. I got my three variables, A, B, and C. And B and C are very much normal matrices. Here's, uh, or vectors, vector C position two, and it's that second value right there. Great. Now in the previous MATLAB video, I also read in from this travel data partial.csv and I did some processing on it. I'm gonna omit the processing because I already did a lot of work on a different file here, but let's take a look at travel data partial.csv because there's a lot going on here. So I double click to open it and I've got all this data. So my first column is this COG ID. I'm not exactly sure what the COG stands for, but it's just IDs. And there's a unique ID for each route that is being analyzed in this data, for each route of data. And there's duplicates, right? Because for a particular route, like New Mexico 528, there's a northbound and a southbound, or an eastbound and a westbound for Northern Boulevard right here. There's tons of columns here, and they all have lots of different types. We have text data, obviously. We have numeric data. Some of it is integers. Some of it's floating point. So the way that I read all this in was I actually created a different variable name for each column. Now I would recommend naming your variables something a little bit better than this, but I just named them alphabetical letters in order. Set that equal to dot 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 to go down to the next line. Text read, the data from file, all those different placeholders. I looked at every single column and I said, okay, what type of data is this? Read in the integers as percent %d, strings as percent %s, floating point values, those are the values with decimal places with percent %f. Delimiter of one, header line of one. We wanna skip that first line because look right here, it's not actually data, right? It's just column labels. And we don't wanna read that in or get confused or confuse octave at all. So we say header lines one right here. Let me go ahead and run this. All right, and so it did read every single one of those columns into these variables right here. It only displays the part at the end right there, but if you check the workspace, you can see that A through O are variables that have 28 rows, one column. There were 28 rows of data in my uh, travel data partial.csv right here. And so all that information is read in. Now in the MATLAB video, the previous video, I did some processing on this to determine some information about it. I'm skipping that. Look, I read it in. I'm gonna go over in more detail uh, the baby names example, which is also covered in the previous video. So if you wanna do more travel data, in Octave, you'll have to experiment with that for yourself. All right, let's go check out this file, most popular baby boy names. So that one is right here. I'm double clicking on it. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. All right, column one is the rank of the name. Column two is the year. Column three is the name itself. And column four is the frequency. The ranks go up to 25, and then it moves on to the next year. And the years go from 1980 to 2023. No, they don't, to 2016. 2013, 2013, I knew there was a three in there. Anyway, since there are four columns, I am going to declare four different variables in the square brackets and set that equal to dot, 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 to move down to the next line, and then text read and read in that data. I have four placeholders right here, percent %d, percent %d, two integers, percent %s for the string names, and then an integer for the frequency. Delimiter continues to be comma, and there is one header line that I want to be skipped. We do not want to include rank, year, name, frequency, those words in our data set. It would confuse things because those aren't numeric and they're also not actually a name. Now I messed around in my code, as you'll see with what I continue onward here, using cell arrays. So this right here is a way of creating a cell array of length, ranks, number of rows, and four columns. This will also work in MATLAB, by the way. And then I fill in the data in those rows and columns with ranks, years, names, and frequencies. So all rows, column one equals ranks, all rows, column two equals years, and so on. I am not planning on covering cell arrays in much detail until very late on in this video series. So this is definitely a lot of preview material. Let me select this code and go ahead and run it. All right, we don't see any output. That is as expected because all of this is suppressed We're using the semicolons, there is no output. Now my original goal here, I should double back and say, is to see which boy names are increasing in popularity and which are decreasing. So I want to get in all my data from the file, I want to sort my data by name, the third column, and then if the names are equal, I want to sort by rank, the first column. Now I could not figure out how to do that in Octave. If you know of a better way that works, um, please tell me in the comments that I was very foolish and this one simple command will solve all my problems. But what I ended up doing was wrote my own sorting code. 
I used a very simple bubble sort. It's like a very slow but easy to write uh, sorting algorithm. You can look up bubble sort online if you want to know more about that. And it uses things that I have not yet covered in this video series, like for loops and if statements. We will get to those, but I could not figure out an easier way to do this, so this is what I did. I'm going to loop from one through the number of rows of data that I have. I use length ranks here, but I could have used length of years or names or frequencies. And then within that loop, I loop again from one through the length of ranks minus n. I don't need to go all the way to the end of the data each time because I've already sorted that data as the bubble sort progresses. This is just a little tiny efficiency gain right here, and it would still work if I deleted it. Now then I need to determine if the data is out of order and needs to be swapped or not, so I use an if statement. I basically say if the two adjacent names at rows k and k plus 1 are out of order, well then swap them. Now if they're not out of order, we still need to check something else. So if they're out of order, or they're the same, but their ranks are out of order, then also swap them. Now, compare alphabetically is a function that I wrote. I'm going to click over to that file right now. Here it is. And you can download all this code from links in the video description. They're all in my Google Drive. Now, I don't believe that I've covered functions in the video series yet either. Um, and we will get to that, but I just had to jump ahead here. I had to do a lot of more advanced stuff to get this to work in Octave. I could not personally figure out another way. Again, tell me in the comments if I was a silly goose and there's such an easy way that I could have done this with like one little function call. So I declare my function. My function returns one result and takes two inputs. Functions are basically miniature little programs that have some inputs and some outputs. And in this case, there are two inputs. I expect them to be strings. And I'm going to return a numeric value. If word one is alphabetically less than word two, then I'm going to set t equal to negative 1. If the words are identical, I'm going to set t equal to 0. If word 2 is greater than word 1, no, I screwed that up. It's if word 1 is greater than word 2, if they're out of order, I'm going to set t equal to 1. And then words that are shorter but otherwise identical are going to be considered less than. So for example, pig is going to be considered less than piggies. And here's my code right here. I figure out which word is shorter. That's going to be important so that I don't go out of bounds when I'm trying to index into the individual letters. I loop from 1 to that word length, comparing individual letters, the letters at position k. If the letter in word 1 is less than the letter in word 2, well then I'm finished, and word 1 is less than word 2, alphabetically. Otherwise, if the letter in word 1 is greater than the letter in word 2, then word one is greater than word two, and I can also return and be finished at that point. Now, otherwise, the letters are the same, and I need to continue looping forward to see if any of the letters differ. Now, it's possible that none of the letters differ, and I get to the end of one of those two words. Now, if the words are the same length, well, then they must be the same word, and I just set t equal to zero, and I'm finished. Otherwise, if word one is shorter, it's considered less than. Otherwise, word two is shorter, and it's considered less than. All right, and that's my function right there. Going back to the other file here. All right, so that's how I'm using it now, right? If it equals 1, the words are out of order. If it equals 0, then the words are identical. But then I go and check the ranks over here. And then I'm going to perform a swap. Now, again, there might be a better way to do this. There probably is. I create a temporary copy of all the values in row k, all the rows k in my four different vectors. And then I replace the value in row k with the values in row k plus 1 for all the different values. And then I set the values in row k plus 1 equal to those backups of row k that I created originally, and a swap has been performed. And that's my bubble sort, finally. Wow, got to it. Okay, so let's highlight that and run it. This does take some time to run. It's running for, I don't know, 20 seconds maybe on my computer. I am speeding through that, so I'm not going to make you wait on that on the video. I'll put up the actual time that it took to run on, on the video itself. A better sorting algorithm would not run this long. All right, that's finished. Uh, now I'm going to display out the results down here. All right, for some reason you can't scroll in the command window in Octave. I'm not sure what that's about. But we can see the very end of the data, and we can see that it is in fact in order, sorted by name first and then sorted by rank. Don't be confused, this is actually a different name down here. So this is the Zachary data, 
Zachary with two A's. Now this is still a little bit hard to interpret, but it basically looks like uh, the popularity of Zachary was higher in the 90s and then has decreased since, but had some resurgences in the 2000s a little bit. So how can we graph that data? Because of the modifications to the data that I did up here, I am going to clear everything out. I'm going to reload in all the data from file. I'm going to recreate the data cell array. And then I'm going to run this code right here to get all the indexes, the positions of just the rows where the name Zachary occurs. Now in the MATLAB video, I used this line right here. That line does not work for me in Octave. I am not sure why, because it's just a string compare, and I am using string compare, but here I'm doing it over a bunch of uh, rows of the cell array, um, whereas here I'm doing it on one particular string at a time. So I guess, guess that that's how it works in Octave. You can only compare one set of strings at a time. All right, so let me just go ahead and rerun. Did I just run all that code? Oh, well, I'm going to do it again. All right, there are my indexes. I think I'd already run it. But there are my indexes right there. And these are where Zachary occurs, which rows in the data. Now I'm going to create just a specific Zach data cell array. Create it in sort of the same fashion, except that I'm indexing into ranks, years, names, and frequencies, only getting these particular rows. Let's go ahead and do that. Great. And now I'm going to run a sorting pass. I'm going to sort my Zach data using a very similar bubble sort to what I did above, only the if statement is different because I'm just comparing the years to make sure the years are in order. And then I'm swapping in a little bit more efficient of a fashion. I'm swapping entire rows instead of copying the four pieces of data out at a time. I think I could have done this before, but uh, I was pretty frustrated with this example and just uh, left it the way it was to not keep messing around with it. I was ready to be done. All right, this is much easier and quicker to run because it's much less data. And then I can graph my results right here. And voila, finally, we get the same graph as I got in the MATLAB video. We see the rank on the y-axis, the year on the x-axis, and we see Zachary popularity over time. And this code is actually the exact same code as I had in the MATLAB video, except maybe I think I called it data instead of Zach data. Now, since the uh, rank is sort of confusing because low rank is actually higher popularity, uh, it's probably a great idea to run this line of code uh, after you've got the rank vector and before you do the plotting, take the absolute value, 25 minus the ranks. It basically just inverts the graph. And so I'll run that again. And there we go. Now higher is more popular. So Zachary with two A's peaked in popularity in 1993, and it's sort of been on a general decline since then. All right, and that's all I got for this video. It's a lot. Right? It's a lot of new stuff. It's a lot of jumping through hoops that I had to do to make this work in Octave. The bad news is that I had to jump through a bunch of hoops. The good news is I did get it working in Octave. So hopefully this is helpful to folks. The next video will be back to the MATLAB content in part 25.